one body in Christ, and we do not stand alone. We are one body, one body in Christ, and He came that we might have life. Can you hear? Good morning. It's nice to have you all with us again today. Today we celebrate the 25th Sunday in Ordinary Time and Mass will be celebrated for the repose of the souls of Ray and Margaret St. John. So let us begin. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace and peace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all and with your spirit. My brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. Lord Jesus, you came to lead the nations into the peace of God's kingdom. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You come in word and sacrament to strengthen us in holiness. Christ, have mercy. Christ of mercy. You will come again in glory with salvation for your people. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you, we give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, Heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, Only Begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. O God, who founded all the commands of your sacred law upon love of you and of our neighbor, grant that, by keeping your precepts, we may merit to attain eternal life. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. Seek the Lord while he may be found. Call him while he is near. Let the scoundrel forsake his way and the wicked his thoughts. Let him turn to the Lord for mercy to our God, who is generous in forgiving. For my thoughts are not your thoughts, nor are your ways my ways, says the Lord. As high as the heavens are above the earth, so high are my ways above your ways, and my thoughts above your thoughts. The word of the Lord. Thanks be, Thanks God. be to God. Responsorial Psalm is 
The Lord is near to all who call upon him. The Lord is near to all who call upon him. Every day will I bless you, and I will praise your name forever and ever. Great is the Lord and highly to be praised. His greatness is unsearchable. The Lord, the Lord is, is near, near to all who call, call upon him. The Lord is gracious and merciful, slow to anger and of great kindness. The Lord is good to all and compassionate toward all his works. The Lord, the Lord is, is near, near to all who call, call upon him. The Lord is just in all his ways and holy in all his works. The Lord is near to all who call upon him, to all who call upon him in truth. The Lord, the Lord is, is near, near to all who call upon him. A reading from the letter of St. Paul from prison to the Philippines. Brothers and sisters, Christ will be magnified in my body, whether by life or by death. For to me, life is Christ and death is gain. If I go on living in the flesh, that means fruitful labor for me. I do not know which I shall choose. I'm caught between the two. I long to depart this life and be with Christ, for that is far better. Yet that I remain in the flesh is more necessary for your benefit. Only conduct yourselves in a way worthy of the gospel of Christ. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, 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 Alleluia. Open our hearts, O Lord to listen to the words of your Son. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus told his disciples this parable. The kingdom of heaven is like a landowner who went out at dawn to hire laborers for his vineyard. After agreeing with them for the usual daily wage, he sent them into his vineyard. Going out about nine o'clock, the landowner saw others standing idle in the marketplace, and he said to them, You too go into my vineyard, and I will give you what is just. So they went off. And he went out again around noon and around three o'clock and did likewise. Going out about five o'clock, the landowner found others standing around and said to them, Why do you stand here idle all day? They answered, Because no one has hired us. He said to them, You too, go into my vineyard. When it was evening, the owner of the vineyard said to his foreman, Summon the laborers and give them their pay, beginning with the last and ending with the first. When those who had started about five o'clock came, each received the usual daily wage. So when the first came, they thought they would receive more, but each of them also got the usual wage. And on receiving it, they grumbled against the landowner, saying, These last ones worked only one hour, and you have made them equal to us, who bore the day's burden and the heat. He said to one of them in reply, My friend, I'm not cheating you. Do you do not agree with me for the usual daily wage? Take what is yours and go. What if I wish to give this last one the same as you? Or am I not free to do as I wish with my own money? Are you envious because I am generous? Thus, the last will be first and the first will be last. The Gospel of the Lord. 
praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. I used to have a, an old aunt, actually a great aunt. She was my grandmother's sister and my mother's aunt. And her name was Aunt Mary. And Aunt Mary was a very interesting person. She um, was rather smart. She was incredibly talkative. Uh, she had worked in Washington, D.C. Her, through her whole career. Uh, she um, had traveled widely. Um, very interesting to talk to, but she had some character flaws. And uh, let's see, she... Um, sometimes said too much. Uh, she didn't have a good governor on the topics she would discuss in public. She, um, any perceived insult, well, she took to heart. So she was angry a good percentage of the time. And she wasn't always the most appreciative person on earth. Uh, those were the problems with Aunt Mary. Well, interestingly, uh, maybe, Oh, 15 years ago or so, she came to Sharon to live. Uh, she had just gotten to be a little too old to live on her own, and so she was in some senior citizen housing here in the Shenango Valley, and my parents were the ones who took care of her, and one or the other would visit her just about every day, and they would take care of her finances, and do all the things that needed to be done, and so they were rather helpful. But Aunt Mary, being Aunt Mary, could be rather difficult. And I remember once I was home on a day off, and my mother was venting. And my mom said, that woman, I can't stand her. She doesn't appreciate anything. And I said, Mom, you know, I was trying to be the good priest there, and so I said, Mom, someday you're going to get to heaven. And when you get to heaven, Aunt Mary's going to be there, and she's going to say, Patsy, because that's what they always called her, Patsy, I appreciate everything you did for me in those days. I know I was difficult, but thank you. And I said, that'll melt my mom's heart. And I looked at my mom, and she said, Aunt Mary won't be in heaven. And I said, well, okay then. And that's, that's the way my mom felt. But... Uh, Anyway, it was it was an interesting moment, uh, and it makes me think because you know Aunt Mary died uh, probably eleven years ago, and my mom died five years ago, and I always wonder when my mom got to the pearly gates, was Aunt Mary there saying, "Thank you so much for everything you've done," and I always wonder what kind of conversation they had because they were both good women. Uh, everybody has flaws, but. I, I'm confident they are both there and, you know, living happily, happily ever after in the great hereafter. So anyway, uh, but I always wonder what the reunion was like. And I think about that when I think about today's gospel, because clearly Jesus was not speaking about labor economics. Uh, no business would flourish if it hired people of, to come in at... 6 a.m. or 7 a.m. and then pay them a daily wage and then paid other people a full day's wage for coming in at noon or 5 p.m. Uh, just would not work. Uh, so clearly he wasn't talking about how we should run a business in this world today. As with every other parable, Jesus is speaking to us about the kingdom. And he's talking about everlasting life. And these workers who come to the vineyard, well, it's the people who are coming to be part of the kingdom, part of God's special family on earth. And then they're going to their eternal reward. And some come at the very beginning, and some come at the very last moment, but they're all given that wage. Or if in light of the kingdom, they're all welcomed home to God's heavenly kingdom and his presence. And so anyway, that's what we need to be thinking about today because we can look around us and see some people who, well, you might say they're living bad lives, but that's kind of judgmental. They're living, some, they're living lives in which they're doing things that we don't approve of and we suspect God doesn't approve of. And the question is, what's going to happen to them someday? And if we see them in heaven, how are we going to respond? 
you know, I spoke last week about my old boss, Elliot, and um, let's think about Elliot for a second. Now, this isn't true about Elliot, let's just pretend, but pretend Elliot was a really horrible person, somebody who was not faithful to his wife, somebody who was not honest in his business practices, somebody who treated everybody poorly. It wasn't just somebody who offended me. But suppose that was the case. And suppose I got to heaven someday, and suppose I was walking down the street in heaven and I ran into Elliot. What would I say to him? And the answer is this. I would probably say something like, Elliot, I'm kind of surprised to see you here. Glad you made it. And he'd probably say something like, yeah, there were some tough years there where I wasn't leading the good life I was called to, but I saw the light, God was merciful, and here I am, and boy, am I thankful. And, and that would be that. That would be the conversation. And that's the way we need to look at this gospel, because some people don't see the light on day one. Some people live long periods of their life without understanding who God is, what their relationship with him should be, how life could be lived and should be lived. And luckily, or happily, or fortuitously, sooner or later they come to their senses and say, you know what? There is a better way to live. They embrace this life in the kingdom of God, and, and then when the day comes, they're welcomed home, and we should be happy about that. Think about the worst person you've ever known or the worst person you've ever heard of. We are not supposed to be a people who are filled with hatred towards those others, but instead, we're supposed to be people who hope they turn things around, who hope they find conversion, who hope in the end that God may have been merciful and that when we get to heaven someday, we'll see them. That's what we should be hoping for. That's what we should be praying for. Because first of all, you know, when I, it's, it's easy for me, as I've said this before, to look around and think of all these people's imperfections, look at all those sinful lives that are being lived, but I do need to look at myself in the mirror and say, you know, there, there's been sins committed. There's a great deal of imperfection there. And it's very likely that if I get to heaven someday, I'm going to be walking down the street and somebody's going to come up to me and say, Richard, I'm surprised to see you here. I remember when you, and they'll tell me the, the, the worst stories of my life. And uh, what I'm going to say to them is, yeah, I was going through a bad time, but God's merciful, God's good, and thank the Lord, here I am. And they'll say, that's great, and we'll live happily ever after. That's what we're looking for, and that's what we should expect, because none of us leads a perfect life. And what we hope for is there's going to be conversion, and what we hope for is that God's going to show mercy, and he has assured us of that. I remember the best example of this I ever was a part of was a few parishes ago, and I won't mention any names in this one, but um, a man died, and I had the funeral, and so I was sitting in the office with my secretary and my parish business manager, and I said, yeah, I have a funeral on Friday for, and I mentioned the man's name, and my business manager said, ooh, that was a bad man. <laughs> and I said, what do you mean? He said, you ask around a little bit and you'll find out. And not out of a sense of needing to gossip, but I just asked a few people and yes, it was not the best lived life. And so anyway, I went to the funeral and had everything and his daughter wanted to say a few words. And so she got up at the proper time and she said, I remember it well, where my father is now, he can't hurt anybody anymore. And our job is to try to forgive him and to pray for him. Thank you for coming. And that's all she said. And it was one of the most profound little talks that I have ever heard because she was somebody who had suffered at this man's hands, clearly. But she was also somebody who thought, okay, it's my job to forgive, who thought it's my job to pray for him so that God will show some mercy and so that maybe somehow he can be cleansed, maybe somehow he can be led home. 
and that was a very, very Christian attitude. It was an attitude that was devoid of hatred. It was an attitude that was filled with mercy. And that's really the way it's supposed to be. And that's how we're supposed to look at this gospel. Because it's not only about heaven and who gets there and what we're going to say to them and what they're going to say to us. It's also about this world. This gospel is supposed to be a gospel that has a great message of hope. Uh, because the idea is that whether somebody comes to the light early or whether they come to the light late, what matters is, is that they're coming into the light. And so what we need to do, even if we see somebody whose life we haven't approved of, who's made all sorts of sinful decisions and all the rest, what we're supposed to do is treat them in a kind and compassionate and Christian fashion because you never know. That might be the moment in which the spark is lit. That might be the moment in which they come to some understanding. That might that small act of kindness that we put forward or that time of in which we might be self-controlled and keep our rage under wraps. That might be the moment that makes the difference in their lives that leads them into the light. And ultimately, that's what we want to be. What I would like to see in heaven someday, what I dream about is the day would come that someday I would get there and God would point some, to someone, to me, and say, you know what? He came to be saved because of the way you treated him. That would be about the best thing that could ever happen because that would be the greatest gift I could possibly give. And so, what we need to make sure we do is look at this gospel not just as, a, as some bad labor economics, but look at it as a model for how God's heavenly kingdom works and a model for how his kingdom on earth should work. We should be people who welcome anyone, no matter what their past, no matter what they've done, no matter what sins they've committed, just so that they're trying to lead the good life they're called to, they're trying to find conversion, they're trying to look for life with God, we need to be a good, healthy, happy part of that. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Now let us profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, Born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God. Begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made, for us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. And by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate, he suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church, I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us turn to God, who is generous in mercy and forgiveness, presenting the needs of the world before him. For all who have sought and found the Lord in his holy church, and for those who are in the process of finding their way, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For political and national leaders, and for all who assist them in exercising their authority, may God open their hearts to his guidance. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who are unemployed or underemployed, and for those who seek to help them, may the Lord provide for them. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who cannot be physically present with us in this sacred assembly, may the Lord's peace come upon them. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. 
and for Ray and Margaret St. John, for whom this Mass is being offered, and for all those who have died, may they experience the eternal joy of the heavenly kingdom. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. O God of abundance and generosity, we ask that you hear our prayers and grant them according to your holy will, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you. Fruit of the earth and work of human hands, it will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. By the mystery of this water and wine, may we come to share in the divinity of Christ, who has humbled himself to share in our humanity. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you. Fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. With humble spirit and contrite heart, may we say, by you, O Lord, may our sacrifice in your sight this day be pleasing to you, Lord God. Wash me, O Lord, from my iniquities and cleanse me from my sins. Pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Receive with favor, O Lord, we pray, the offerings of your people, that what they profess with devotion and faith may be theirs through these heavenly mysteries, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For you laid the foundations of the world and have arranged the changing of times and seasons. You formed man in your own image and set humanity over the whole world in all its wonder to rule in your name over all you have made and forever praise you in your mighty works through Christ our Lord. And so with all the angels we praise you as in joyful celebration we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. 
Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis our Pope, Lawrence our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember your servants, Ray and Margaret St. John, whom you have called from this world to yourself. Grant that they, who were united with your son in a death like his, may also be one with him in his resurrection. Remember also our brothers and sisters, who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, and with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil, Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, and my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always, and with your spirit. Now let us offer each other a sign of peace. peace, with you. peace with you. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Since we cannot have regular communion, please recite with me this prayer that, so that we can have spiritual communion together. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot receive you at this moment sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Let us pray. Graciously raise up, O Lord, those you renew with this sacrament, that we may come to possess your redemption, both in mystery and in the manner of our life, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. 
May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Go forth, the Mass is ended. Thanks be to God. So uh, today I'd like to just say a word or two about actually coming to church on Sunday or Saturday night. Now, the obligation is still lifted, so you do not need to come under pain of sin or anything like that. Um, also, if you are worried about you know, catching the, the virus, uh, definitely stay home. Uh, no problem there. But um, that being said, if you've, you know, you're going out to restaurants and you're going to football games and all those sorts of things, it's probably time to come to church. Uh, so what I thought we should do is just to show you how it looks on a weekend. So the first thing you'll see it ha was a six o'clock mass, which is one of our more sparsely attended masses. And then you'll see a uh, four o'clock mass, or yes, a four o'clock mass. And that's one of our more heavily attended Masses. As you can see, there's still room for many more people. So if you can come, please do come. It'd be more than welcome. It'd be nice to see people in person. I really enjoy these Masses, but at the same time, I realize that it's better uh, when we're all together. It's better when people can actually receive the Eucharist and all the rest. So our Masses that have the higher attendance are 4 o'clock on Saturday and then 8 and 10 on Sunday morning. Our more sparsely attended Masses are 6 o'clock on Saturday and noon on Sunday. And um, we're going to continue this ministry for quite a while, so if you can't come, fine. Uh, I'll be seeing you on the computer or on the TV. But if you can be here, um, come as soon as you're able. Uh, it would be nice to see you all in person. So have a good rest of the day and a good week.